This week, Connor is talking about Batman's giant coin. Ron's going to Body World. And Josh, that's me, is talking about other lives. This episode of iFanboy is brought to you by Click It or Ticket and Squarespace. Kids, welcome to iFanboy, the comic book discussion show from the website iFanboy.com. My name is Connor Kilpatrick. At the end of every episode, you may notice we put our email address up. That's for you to email us topics or questions or comments or concerns or complaints. Sometimes we get those too. Yeah, I'm as shocked as you are. Today I thought we'd do an email. Let's answer somebody's email that wrote in. And it's a pretty pertinent one to my interest, so let's go. James from London writes, Hello there. I've been reading comics for about one year now and got into Batman sort of recently. In Batman Hush, I noticed a T-Rex and a huge coin inside of the Batcave. So what's up with that? Thanks a lot. Good question, James. What is up with that? First of all, let's talk about the Batcave. It's a wondrous place. It's full of all kinds of trinkets and computers and trophies. And that's the thing with the DC Universe, you may notice. And actually Marvel too, the Avengers. They like to keep their trophies as superheroes. They're sort of like serial killers or soldiers in war. They always have trophy rooms, and there's cool. It's a way to sort of relive, relive or revisit old adventures and, and have nods to them. And, and I like that sort of thing. I like walking through the trophy room scenes, and you can see all kinds of old relics and artifacts. The Batcave is no different. The Probably the most prominent feature in terms of trophies in the Batcave, I don't know if you want to call it a trophy, is the costumes, like especially Jason Todd's costume from uh, from when he was robbed and was killed by the Joker. That's always been prominently displayed. You, you almost always see that in the Batcave. As well as, and sometimes you see other costumes. Uh, sometimes artists put in Dick Grayson's costume. Sometimes Thomas Wayne's original Batman costume when he went to a costumed ball as, as a Batman character when he was uh, still alive, obviously. Then you've got things like the back computer and you've got old vehicles and you've got all kinds of weight rooms. Things, basically, the Batcave is a wondrous place under the ground with things you would never think to think of. Old whirly gigs and things like that. But let's talk about the question James had. The two most prominent features in the Batcave. That would be the giant coin and the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Where do these things come from, you might ask? That's a good question. I actually had to look it up myself. The T-Rex came from Batman number 35, 1946, from a story called Dinosaur Island. And apparently that's where Batman and presumably Robin went to some island full of dinosaurs that probably turned out to be robots because that's what the T-Rex is, there's a giant robot dinosaur in there. And Batman took it home. How did he get it back from the island? I don't know, it's pretty big. He had to have chartered some sort of plane. Um, and how did he get into the Batcave? It's hard, it's hard to... to, to how do, you, how do you transport a dinosaur? I don't know. Um, but he did it, and it's in the Batcave. The coin. The coin is probably the most prominent feature. You always see the coin. Sometimes you get knocked over. Somebody's climbing up it. It's, it's big. It's a big coin. Abraham Lincoln staring right at you, making you feel guilty about the Civil War. The penny came from uh, World's Finest Comics, number 30, 1947, when Batman fought a villain called the Penny Plunderer. He was penny obsessed and probably not all that intimidating. So at the end of that adventure, which I, I haven't read, but I might because I could those Batman, those Batman Chronicles, which show the old issues. Uh, he took this giant penny home. Also, how did he get it, how did he get it home? How did he get the penny into into his Batcave? I don't know. That's a pretty big thing. Well, it's really cool. What they didn't they did apparently Batman number two fifty six, and they did a story called Ever Wonder where Batman gets those wonderful trophies, and they basically put all the old stories into one. They basically reprinted them all into one issue, so you could see. Where did he get all these stories from? That's, that's pretty cool. So if you can track down Batman uh, 256, good luck to you. Then you can find out. If not, now you know. Now you know at least where they came from. And, and that Batman is a hoarder. He's a bit of a hoarder. He likes, he likes to keep his things. He likes to be reminded. He's got no other life, really. So why not be reminded of past glories? Again, somewhat like a serial killer. <laughs> So that's, that's James, that's your answer. That's where, Bat, that's where the T-Rex came from, that's where the Penny came from, that's where all the other trinkets in there came from. He's probably got stuff stored everywhere. They could probably just get one of those shows that come in and clean out your house. They could probably do a wonders for the Batcave. Um, so there you go. Email us in contact at ifanboy.com if you have more questions like that you want answered on this show or a weekly audio show. Stay tuned, we got more for you. This episode of iFanboy is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is a publishing system for anyone looking to build a blog, portfolio, or any kind of website. They offer a flexible tool for just about anyone with no coding experience required. 
I have jaflanagan.com, and I do not know a thing about how to build a website, despite having run a website for 10 years. I know, don't ask me about it. But it's the perfect place for me to showcase a little bit of writing here and there, some updates, and more importantly, it's where I post my comic book work and keep people up to date on the kind of stuff that I'm doing there. It's an invaluable tool for me, and uh, Squarespace makes it really easy. If you've been looking for a way to get yourself out on the internet and you don't know how to do it, check out squarespace.com and use the promotional code iFanboy when you're placing your order. Hey, I'm Ron, and today I want to tell you about Body World by Dash Shaw. It was published by Pantheon Books, and this hardcover is going to cost you about $27.95. Uh, you can probably find a discount on Amazon, but trust me, it's worth it. This is a great book. For those of you who haven't heard of Dash Shaw, Dash Shaw is kind of the indie alternative comics darling right now. Uh, he's the guy who did Bottomless Belly Button, which came out a couple years ago and kind of took the whole indie comics world by storm. Dash Shaw is a very innovative, uh, creative comic creator with some ideas that are totally out there. With alternative comics, typically they, you know, they tend to be a little weird, a little on the odder side of things, and Body World definitely falls on the weird kind of side of things. So if you're looking for a typical kind of comic book, this isn't the one to look for, but if you're looking for something that is a little more challenging, a little more uh, crazy, Body World is something to check out. Uh, he originally did Body World on his website at dashsaw.com. From 2007 to 2009, it was a weekly strip that is now collected into this beautiful hardcover edition. But if you read it online, you're still going to want to check out the book because there are things that are slightly changed and tweaked and he's introduced new things for readers of the book. So if you read it online, you definitely want to check out the book. Uh, the story is a bit of a science fiction drama story that takes place in a future town. It's set in the year 2060 in the town of Boney Borough. And it's all focused around this one hallucinogenic drug that allows people to project their minds into the bodies of other people. So if I take this drug, I can project my thoughts and experiences into the body of someone else. Uh, it focuses around four characters, as the cover might suggest. Uh, Pauly Panther is a botanist who's uh, researching this hallucinogenic drug that grows in this town. Uh, Miss Jewell is a science teacher at the local high school. Billy Borg is the uh, jock star of, the, of, the, of the, the school's team. There's a sport called die ball, which Dashaw has invented and explains in this book. It's fascinating. You definitely got to check it out. So Billy Borg is the star of that team. And then there's Pearl Peach, who's a schoolgirl who's looking to escape out of the town, and she finds herself with uh, the botanist, the Pauly character, and they kind of hit it off. It's a trippy, trippy book. As you can tell by Dashaw's art, he's got a real kind of sketchy, kind of, um, you know, very indie kind of look to it. Uh, because he did this online, it tends to have a little of that, that animation, computer-assisted graphics kind of look to it, um, but it doesn't affect his storytelling at all. What's interesting is that on the website, and you can see that uh, the panels were done in a way to scroll as you scroll in a web browser. Dashaw has replicated that with this book. Typically books, you know, um, we open them up and we read them like normal, not with Body World. Body World is set with a vertical format, so what you do is you open it up and read it, and read it vertically, which is you know a different than any other comic book that's out there. Um, additionally, what he's done is in um, he's created this entire world of Boney Borough, and he at the, on the inside cover of the book he's provided a map of the town. And this is crazy. The map of the town has got a grid, and he's identified both colors where various points of location are in the, in the town as they relate to the story. So what they suggest is you fold this out, and as you read, you keep the map to your right. And that way, there are little visual cues based off the color or based off references to the grid as to where the story is taking place. It's a total innovative way to do a comic book. A lot of people say Dashaw um, is like the future of comics, that he's you know, challenging the medium and creating new ways to read comics. Body World is a definite example of that. No other book is as evolved as this one as I've seen. So we've got two maps that fold out here. It definitely is a challenge to read, but it's a long book, over 300 pages, and it's totally worth every penny you're going to spend on it. So you can go to dashshaw.com where you can see more about Body World. You can see the original web strips. Head over to uh, ifanboy.com. You can get a link to the buy the book over on Amazon from Pantheon. It's, like I said, it's a little pricey, almost $30, but it's really unlike any book you're ever going to read. Uh, so up next is Josh, and he's taking a look at Other Lives by Peter Baggy. This episode of iFanboy is brought to you by Click It or Tick It. That means put a seatbelt on. Don't be a moron. Seriously. Also, this Memorial Day weekend, the cops are all going to be working together. They're going to be looking for people who don't have seatbelts on. And it's going to be like a big thing. And that's a dumb ticket. That's, that's not something you want to pay for. You want to buy comics with that, right? Am I right? So let's just, you know, make it happen. Let's roll. And we are back. I am here to talk to you about 
Peter Bagg's Other Lives from Vertigo Comics. Peter Bagg is a name. He's like an indie giant. He's kind of right up there with Dan Klaus and Chris Ware and things like that. And he's been around since the mid, early 80s uh, doing his, his indie comics. And, and when you look at Peter Bagg's work, it actually looks like what you think of as those kind of indie comics. There's big, exaggerated sort of faces and bodies, and it's, it's almost ugly to look at. I mean, like, he's not... He's not flattering about his characters very, very much. He, he sort of exaggerates every little feature about them. But he's been around for a really long time, and he's most well known for a book called Hate, um, which I've never read. So actually, I've never read any Peter Bag, but um, I've been aware of him. I've known his name for a really long time. So I was looking forward to reading this book, but I didn't really know what to expect because sometimes that stuff gets a little too esoteric, um, and it's just like, I, it's very symbolic, and you don't really know what you read, but everybody tells you it's genius, and you just nod your head and say, oh, okay. Um, Second Lives is actually pretty straightforward. It is about a group of characters, and they've all got, every, all the main characters in the book seem to have some other thing going on. One of them uh, it seems like a family man, and, but it turns out like he's lost his job and his wife left him because he gambles online, but he's like a big magnate in, in Second World, which is basically uh, supposed to be Second Life. Um, and, and that's one of the things that happens. Another one, he seems to be a respectable journalist, but it turns out that he thinks that he's a fraud. And then there's another guy and they think he's crazy, but you know, he's a spy, but actually he's just a dude who lives with his mom. It goes on and on like this. And you find out that that each of the characters are not exactly what they, they either say they are or they're not what they want to be and things like that. And one of, one of the things that's really good about this is it does make you want to keep turning the pages because you keep learning new things about these characters. At the other hand, it's um, supposed to be funny, and it's kind of funny, but like, I can't remember one time where I laughed out loud while I was reading it. But like I said, it's got that page-turning quality to it. It's really fairly straightforward, and you get to know who these characters are right away. And it actually reminds me a little bit of, of Tricked by Alex Robinson. There's a twist at the end of it uh, that, that I could tell you about it, but you're still not going to see it coming when it does. It's kind of weird. Like I said, the art does take some getting used to. If you are used to sort of mainstream-style comic book art, this is going to feel like a lot to you. Uh, everybody's very exaggerated, but it's sort of, it's drawn in such a way that the characters have, all their features are exaggerated to exaggerate the sort of traits of their personality that you're not necessarily gonna like. But it's hard to say. Um, it's very slice of life. There's nothing strange or weird about it. Nobody has any extraterrestrial powers. That's not the right word. I say I liked it. I'm gonna give this like a three out of five stars. It was really interesting to listen to. There's a hardcover out and the hardcover is 25 bucks from Vertigo. Maybe wait till the soft cover, but give it a try. If it's the kind of thing like if you've been thinking about trying some stuff like that or you were a really big Peter Bag fan before, uh, this might be the kind of thing for you. But it's like, it's a nice little graphic novel. I, I enjoyed reading it. It's definitely worth checking out. If you've been interested in Peter Bag or or you want more like slice of life stories, this is one of those things that's one of my favorite genres is that comics don't do enough of is sort of this kind of of just it's people and there's stuff going on. And I think one of the things about this story is because it interacts with the virtual world of the second world, uh, it it it's a good story for a comic book. It works really well. And I've always say that comic books can tell any kind of story you want, but there are some kind of stories that it tells really well, and this is one that this wouldn't really necessarily make a great movie or, or anything like that, but I think it makes a really good comic book. It's, it's a good concept for that. And it's a nice sort of a single volume. It's just one story in a graphic novel, and that's always cool. So that's definitely worth checking out, Peter Bagg's Other Lives. And that is all for this episode of iFanboy. You can go to iFanboy.com and comment on this show. If you've read the books or you've talked about any other stuff in this show, you can send us an email at contact at iFanboy, or you can send us a voicemail at 888-FANBOYS, which is 3262697. Finally, follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash iFanboy. That is all. Thank you very much. Now I have to get back to my other life. Okay, there was a brief World of Warcraft thing, but here's the thing. I played it a lot, but I wasn't good. Talk to you later. This isn't good at all. This is, this is very, this is, what is this? A, you know what? Just, there we go. Let's take this off. No, no, no. This must, this must be destroyed. It, it cannot haunt us anymore. This, there it is. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. 
Oh no, oh no, good, oh, that's all. Oh, oh good, oh, we all good. Oh.